It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott's here. Mary Jo Foley's here. I'm back. And we're going to talk about Windows Live, the new BlackBerry, Windows Phone, and the future of Windows 8. It's all ahead. That's what we do every week on Windows Weekly. Stay tuned. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 259, recorded May 3rd, 2012. Live is dead. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Go to My PC. Why commute when Go to My PC lets you work from wherever you are? Visit gotomypc.com for your free 30 day trial. Just use the offer code Windows. And by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on new accounts, go to Squarespace.com and use the offer code Windows5. And don't forget, they now offer free domain registration when you subscribe to an annual plan. And by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to Audible.com slash Windows. It's time to examine your windows. Open your windows. Throw them open to the world and say, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to tell. Oh, that's the wrong movie. Ladies and gentlemen. You're, ma you're making it sound like a proctologist exam or something. <laughs> Throw open. <laughs> oh, it's, you're going to feel girl. a slight prick and then it's going to hurt a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's Paul Therott, Mr. Happy-Go-Lucky, PT, we call him. The uh, man in charge of the super site for Windows, winsupersite.com, news editor for Windows IT Pro. Does IAS do all of this? Uh, uh, he does it half-heartedly, I think it's fair to say. <laughs> Author of the Delphi 3 Super Bible. And Windows mm -hmm. Phone Secrets, among other fabulous tomes. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking Paul Therott. In the orange trunks, in the other <laughs> corner, Mr. Mrs. Mary Jo Foley, the uh, ZDNet blogger at AllAboutMicrosoft.com, the author of Microsoft 2.0, What They Left Out in 1.0, <laughs> and other fine novels. <laughs> and, Windows Live Edition. Windows <laughs> Yes, Windows Live Edition. I'm glad to be back. I missed you guys. Norway's fun. Yeah. But there's only so much dried fish one can eat. Oh, Yum. Actually, a lot of beer. Good beer. You would you would like the beer in Norway, Mary Jo. Nice. Yeah. Um, that's And it was fun. And very nice people. And you know what? A safe country. You could just leave your stuff lying around. I just left stuff lying. I put my wallet on a wall and walked away. Just leave it lying around. I'll tell you how honest they are. We're in the train from Bergen to Oslo. Beautiful train, by the way, in which, and Paul, you might be interested in this, we go through the planet of Hoth. Nice. Empire Strikes Back was shot. Yes, at the hotel. In the mountains, yeah. And in fact, uh, when we got on, the conductor said, this is the stop where Harrison Ford got off by accident. <laughs> and, they, <laughs> and they had to send the helicopter for him to get him back to the planet Hoth. But as we're, as we're going through, it really looks like the beautiful it's planet Hoth and there's still yeah, snow, yeah, yeah. And even despite the fact that it's, uh, it's almost May and it's still there's lots of snow on the ground, skiers and everything. But it was gorgeous. But as we, as we get on the train, a woman walks down the train saying, I found this thousand kroner note on the floor. Anybody drop a, a th now thousand kroner note is like hundreds of dollars. Mm. And she say, anybody lose this? And nobody's saying anything. First, mm. she's really honest. Second, everybody else on the train is really because they could say, oh, oh yeah, that's mine. No, <laughs> she's waving it all the way down the train. So that's Norway for you, right there. Smoked fish, planet Hoth, and honest people. Those those things don't seem to mix. Uh, you think the suicide rate would be through the roof? No, and no, no, would no. Really, edge, it's very know? jolly. A very jolly pe people. Uh, they're like the Germans with a sense of humor. Yeah, but it's like okay, we have to eat smoked fish today, but at least tomorrow will be negative ten, so we have that to look forward to. You know where you know? we were. Christensen is right on the Atlantic Ocean, and so it is not as cold as Oslo because the ocean moderates the temperatures, and it only gets the north, the uh, the warm the breeze Atlantic. off the North Atlantic. <laughs> yeah. 
And then as we were on the boat, the captain says, it is a beautiful day, very unusual. You can see, look on the horizon, that plume of smoke. That is the oil rig. <laughs> we never see that, he says. There it Picture is, it. pumping smoke. You know, people in Massachusetts are right about those wind farm things, <laughs> right? Which yeah. are arguably okay looking. Yeah. No, we got oil. <laughs> Certainly got oil. not smoky. They love it in Norway, though, because Norway was really a, a poor country until in the 60s it discovered oil, and it made them a very wealthy nation. So they're the Dubai of the North, basically. Yeah, the play the playboys of Europe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mary Jo. Hey, Paul. Good to see you. Thank you. I It was Ayaz last week, wasn't it? Thank you for filling in, Ayaz. I appreciate it. Um, but we're back to work now. No more fun and games for you two. Let's kick <laughs> things off. With a, with a little eulogy for live. Windows Live. I wonder if they'll do a, a last, uh, what do you call it? Not Las Vegas. A, uh, last Rites. Uh, New Orleans style <laughs> funeral. Oh, wouldn't know. that be good with a jazz oh. band? They Dixie dance band, and band. Then play the trumpets. <laughs> oh, when the saints come marching in, it's dead. So um, yeah. joining Clippy. Windows Live is dead, the, the headline of the week. <laughs> joining Clippy <laughs> and Windows XP, Windows Live. Wait a minute, it's not dead. They just renamed it, right? All the features are still there. Uh, what? Mostly some, we what? think. We're not positive. But Windows Live is so great. Why would they kill it? You know, I have to say, I, we're about, what, eight months now into this building Windows 8 blog thing. And I, I have to say, I think we're actually finally starting to get good at it. <laughs> because <laughs> they never say what they mean. And you, you really have to read between the lines and you have to pay attention to what they say. In this case, they provided a chart or a table, you know, where they showed this New is name. what this is going to become. And, yeah. and, and you, you will actually find most of what you need to know on, in this table. So, for example, they're saying um, Windows Live. Reimagined, yeah, it's reimagined. They, they, reimagined as a dead thing. So imagine if you like will. A, well, so for example, one of the things that's not in that table is Windows Live Writer. Yeah, right. Which I love. Windows Live. It's the blog right. tool. So it's dead, right? I think we. I think you know Windows but, Live Writer is Paul, fun. Yes, it may not be dead. It may not be dead oh, no, because this morning I um I tweeted to Chris Jones. I said, you know, is so. Windows Live Writer, dead, not dead. Yeah. He just tweeted back a few minutes ago and said, no, it'll be available as a Windows 8 app. As a Windows 8 It's not so on that app. chart. The whole thing oh. is really they're all apps now, right? So, right. Um, uh, you know, uh, SkyDrive is a SkyDrive app. Office is the Office app. Well, they're Email not all is the yeah, mail app. Not, no, not all of them. Not no? All. So the, a lot of the uh, – this is yet another indication that they're drawing a line between what we've called like consumption-style apps and – productivity apps, you know, where there's a couple of productivity bits in there that are going to continue. Um, Windows Live Photo Gallery is an example and Windows Live Movie Maker. Those things are going to continue as Windows applications is what it looks like. Um, there's a Photos app that does has nothing to do with photo editing, but is everything about photo viewing. And so that thing will be in Windows 8 as an app. You right. know, mail, calendar, contacts, and messaging, all apps. All apps. Um, but they will still have, live they will live I mean, on I, with live addresses, calendar.live.com, right? Uh, we'll scroll up. See, I don't yeah, that's no. just the web. That's, that's the, the web, HTML5. Web. So live.com's not gone. Uh, we don't, I, we don't know. know. <laughs> I'd be surprised. Well, what's this column for then? I know. Well, that's what it is now. Oh, okay. You know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, the table's uh, arranged in a weird bonus. way. Okay. This, yeah. The thing it is now is on the right. This is the thing it is now. And then the, the yeah. two things on the left, Windows 8 and Windows Phone, are the things they will be in the future. Well, no, Windows Phone is now, actually, okay. that, that's as <laughs> okay. it exists now. You'll forgive my confusion. No, no, I, I, well, let's, no that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's, so, for example, Live Mesh, we wondered last it's week. Just, when, uh, this obfuscates everything. And yet, I think, reveals a lot if you uh -huh. pay attention to it, uh -huh. right? I mean, um, uh, Windows Live Mesh, we wondered last week, is this thing dead? Because, no, you know, right. SkyDrive app kind of does a lot of it, but not all of it. Right. Um, Windows Live Mesh. Not mentioned. Is, is, well, it is mentioned. See, it's oh, over it's there on the right. Right. There it is. It's, it, there it was. But then when you go over yeah. to the left, there it isn't. And I think that says it's gone. So it I was in that, earlier versions, you had folder share live mesh, Windows yeah. live mesh. In Windows 8, you have SkyDrive app and SkyDrive desktop. Yeah, I think and, by that supersedes all of these. Right. In other words, they mentioned it. That means it's gone. You know, Windows <laughs> Live Mail, gone. It's now uh, just the Mail app. Right. But that's all it was anyway. Come on. Yeah. 
Well, right? I mean, but Windows mm -hmm. Live Writer is an example of something that exists today that is not in the right hand side of the chart. So we all assumed it was gone right. um, since they didn't even mention it. It's not but even the, now I'd say maybe it's not gone. Maybe it's actually key. Throw, throw the chart up one more uh, one more time. I'll, I will throw it the, up. There is another confusing Probably little area in there yes, that I, yes. I believe is misreported okay. or mis you know right. uh, noted. So MSN Messenger yeah. is listed over on the right for some reason. Yeah. Even though the current version of that thing is actually Windows Live Messenger. It hasn't been MSN Messenger for a while. No, for years and years. Uh, maybe since 2005. <laughs> it's been a long time. Jeez Louise. So why isn't Windows Live Messenger there? And what is the fate of Windows Live Messenger? I know there's a messaging app. But, you know, the messaging app in Windows 8, at least today, doesn't do everything that Windows Live Messenger does. Now, one possible solution is obviously that Messenger continues, which actually I wouldn't be too surprised by. But the other one is, what if they just use Skype as their Windows-based uh, oh. messaging-type client, you know, an application? Oh, wow. Skype isn't mentioned in there at all. Right. Nope. Oh, right. Yep. I didn't even think about Skype. Yep. Oh. So lots of, you know, not surprisingly, lots of questions. But again, I, we're getting a little better at reading between the lines here. I mean, I think, you know, Windows Live Mesh is a good example of that where yeah, no one came out and said Windows Live Mesh is dead. But if you look at that table, Windows Live Mesh is dead. <laughs> but it's, you know? but it's, but it's, its functionality is contained in SkyDrive. You not would think all so, of it, though. but not actually. <laughs> As it turns no. out, not exactly. <laughs> no, only, only a subset of it is. And so it's there like, are a lot yeah, of features like, in, in Mesh. That they haven't said if they if if they ever will be added to SkyDrive or when they will. So we don't know. And one of those millions of questions we really just don't know, as we say on the show every week, I think. <laughs> Windows 8 is designed, says it's building Windows 8 blog, to be cloud-powered, mm. so it comes with Metro-style apps for communications, sharing, schedule, photos, and videos. Mm. You've already seen them in the preview version. All powered by cloud services when you sign into your Microsoft account. Family safety, Windows Phone. For customers who use Windows 7, we have a set of Windows desktop apps. So they're going to replace the existing apps for Windows 7. Which, by the way, I, I take to mean they're going to rename them, right? Yeah, because there are already I apps. I don't think they're going to you know, add stuff to it. I think they're just going to rename And what happens to live.com? Right. Yeah, we don't they're know. They're not going to get rid of that. And what happens, I mean, there are probably millions of people who have live.com email addresses. Right. You can't get rid uh, of that. You can't really get rid of it. No. no. Will they offer some other form of email well, address? I look at this and I say, I see that SkyDrive is now going to be SkyDrive.com. No, no more SkyDrive.live.com. It says that. It says that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, it says, I don't know, because this is that column that you say doesn't mean what I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that means what, what you, you think, think it is. So this, in this web HTML5 column, live.com, everywhere it says hotmail.com, account.live.com, calendar.live.com, skydrive.com. Yeah. No, okay, so skydrive.com does work. I, I actually Okay, know. so that's there. there. That's interesting. But photos.live.com is still there. People.live.com is your contacts. Calendar. Mm -hmm. Sounds like these are going to persist. As live.com. I guess. Well, why, <laughs> yeah. why is the window... You know, the funny thing is the calendar thing, right? So, yeah. for example, the, the, the name of the calendar service is Hotmail Calendar. Right. And no, yet, for anymore, some reason, the address friend. of it is calendar.live.com. Well, we're not... It does. I don't see the word Hotmail anywhere here. It's, no, I know, but I'm, I'm just telling you that's what it is. It's now your calendar. Okay. <laughs> but even the contacts are, you know, they're really Hotmail contacts. Uh, again, I see people.live.com. I don't see no no stinking hotmail. Are it's they almost like they you're suggesting this thing is incomplete. Yeah, it's like they don't. It's like somebody <laughs> made this up. I don't. I love that. I love that there is a an API uh, column as oh, well yeah. because that's so that's important. like super important to get out there. <laughs> Let's to, mention uh, rest in JSON for storage. Oh, thank God, JSON's in there. <sighs> yeah, I don't know what this column is. Just like uh, goofy. Yeah. But, them. Although, although you, I, I could say, you know, remember who this blog is for, right? It's isn't it for people building Windows eight apps? So maybe they care uh, more than the is it? Consumer. I don't know. I, I, I'm I not know. Sure that, is it? I don't think so. I don't. Well, I, and it's for us who are. This is our so only way, building Windows eight, right? Here in this paragraph yeah. uh, at the end, it does say, "In coming weeks, we'll share more information as as well as our upcoming work with Skype." 
Yeah, so they're they're not they haven't actually started working with Skype, but they plan to do that sometime in the future, according to that. Right. Sentence. So the Skype story is still to be told. <laughs> yes. Someday. Still, we're thinking about it. So we had a meeting. Today. We will tell the gonna... Skype story. <laughs> All will be revealed in time. I'm sure that's a line in there somewhere because it's like you, you guys don't need to know everything now. We'll tell you more later. It literally is a need to know basis. So, yes. so the bottom line. Yep. By the way, what's really confusing is mm. it looks like Stephen Sanofsky wrote this post at the top. But then, he does. He does that with then every. Chris single. Jones wrote it at the bottom. So I don't. So like, actually, so here's my theory. I think Steven Sanofsky only gave himself access to the server. And so he has to post everything. Uh, but Chris wrote it. So other people, well, every single post is written by someone else. So Steven Sanofsky writes the introduction. Oh. And then he posts whatever else some, someone else so wrote. So he wrote an epigram here. And this is yep. his epigram that begins the 8,000 word post from Chris Jones. <laughs> Actually, this one's not by, by standards this shorter. of this plot. Yeah. This was yeah. a shorter one. Yeah, because cause they don't know what the hell This one you could actually get through, like, you know, without going to get a snack and a drink. You could read it at once. <laughs> Although, you had to kind of read it three times to understand you it. Did. So, actually, it ended <laughs> yeah. up being just as long as any of them. That's true. <laughs> Every like major Paul and I are on I am. We're on I am to each other. Like, do you are think you? it means this? Really? That they're saying oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I don't know. Do the you? I am's are flying. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you have to parse it, you know? Yeah, you do. You, do. you yeah. can't just read it it's and walk clear. away. You, yeah. you know, what, this means something. Yeah. Plus, it never says, hey, we're killing Windows Live. Surprise. No, but that's it does say, but that's what it says. We, Windows right. Live reimagined. Yeah, reimagined. <laughs> we're going to imagine we never came up with Windows Live. We feel really stupid <laughs> about that. I like Windows Live. You and I, Paul, have been singing its praises. In fact, you keep saying, oh, no, no, I, why don't they update listen. it? Why don't they update it? We love Windows I, I, Live. This goes back, uh, you know, literally to this announcement. But the biggest fear I had when they did this, because I loved the stuff that at the time yeah. MSN was doing, um, those guys were iterating very quickly right. on the products. And, right. and I remember we, we had this conversation. I said, there's only one thing that can happen here when these two things come together. Either Windows is going to become faster thanks to these guys, or more likely, yes, MSN guys are going to become slower thanks to Windows. You I think totally we all that. said that, and now we know <laughs> what happened. Yeah. You totally <laughs> called it... and. Paul Thoreau. Well, it's just, you know, it's the way it was. And and the other thing is, and I brought this up a bunch of times, you know, these guys promised, even though they had to do it because of antitrust reasons, that when they pulled all those applications out of Windows before and put them into Windows Live Essentials, the deal was, don't worry, oh, this is good, this is good news because we're going to update these things all the time now. This lets us update them more quickly than every three years with Windows. And you know what? That's been kind of a bust. Yeah, and you has. complained about Which, that. And that was, a, that was yeah. the writing on the wall that this was not going to become the future of right. Windows. So congratulations. They kind of admit it in the post, yeah. right? In the post at the beginning or somewhere in the middle, maybe they they kind of say, you know, you know, when we called this Windows Live Essentials and we promised you guys we'd you know be updating it, it was a service. Well, actually, it was just an app, and we never really did that. I mean, it was kind of like a the, mea culpa. Uh, they should have put the ultimate extras guy on it, you know. Oh gee. <laughs> that would have caused it to another sore right spot. <laughs> the guy who wrote the plus disc. Now there's a guy. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, it's reimagined. Yes. <laughs> it's a little bit of a, of a uh, Rod Serling kind of. Imagine, if you will. Yes. A, an application suite, reimagined. By the way, thank you for the extra gigabytes on my SkyDrive, Microsoft. That was nice. I went from 7 to 25 on my uh, SkyDrive. Okay. You didn't get that? You got that. No, no, we did. Of course, yeah. Was that one day only, or should people uh, immediately? I don't think check? so. I, I I bet it's still there now if you have an existing account. I think it's which is like a free upgrade to twenty five gigabytes. Yes, yeah. yeah. Most yeah. people didn't know it was there. <laughs> right, you had to opt in. You, it's not automatic. You had to opt in if you didn't have a, I think, four gigs already stored in right. SkyDrive. You had to actually say, "I want the twenty five gigs." Break. I did that. So now right. I have twenty five gigs. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean I love you know, and I hope they don't get rid of mesh, but they, but I don't think they will. They'll have something that Sky called SkyDrive that is mesh. Yeah, eh. most of it. Yeah, eh. I, I, I think it's unfortunate in some ways. We're going to lose. We're going. I think we're going to lose a few things. But yeah, I mean, some of the the core functionality certain, certainly will be there. Okay. Okay. We'll see. All right. <laughs> okay, we're talking Windows. We'll see, we'll see how they handle it, Mr. Paul Thorat, Ms. Mary Joe Foley. 
And our uh, this portion of our program, the Windows Live Reimagined portion of our program, is brought to you by... Go to my PC. The good folks at Citrix who have made the ultimate in remote access software easy to use, easy to install, and free for the next 30 days. With gas prices going up, more and more of us don't even want to come to work, you know? Just stay at home. What if you What if you took every Friday and you worked at home? And, you, and uh, I mean, you'd save 20% on gas. You'd save a lot of wear and tear on you and your car. You'd be happier, and you'd be ready for the weekend a little bit earlier. Go to my PC could do that. Just show the boss, go to my PC, and say, look, I'm at home. I'm working on my office computer. I'm getting things done. I'm sending and receiving email, running any program, accessing any network resource. I am go, 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 thanks to go to my PC. And here's the beauty part. Works on a Mac or PC. You can access it from a Mac or PC and iPad, iPhone, or Android tablet. So you can hit the road, take your iPad, Especially this new one with the high res screen, man, and you log into that computer and you're doing everything just like you were at work, but you're not, and that's beautiful. It sets up in minutes. You don't need any IT help. You don't need any port forwarding. It's secure. There's never been an exploit ever with Go to My PC. Now, I want you to try it free for 30 days. You just visit the website G O T O M Y P C. It's easy. Sometimes people go to mypc.com, but no, it's go to, go to my. Uh, no, I shouldn't have said that. Now it's, everybody's going to be uh, completely confused. It's go to mypc.com. Vis- they, that's why they always say visit go to mypc.com. Then you see here this try it free button. Click of that and uh, use the offer code Windows. Even if you're putting it on the Mac, it's referring not to the operating system, but to this show Windows Weekly. And we didn't want to make you type the whole weekly thing. And if you type in Windows as the promo code, you get 30 days absolutely free. You could use it. Uh, they used to make. They said. You know, the original offer was one hour. Well, come on. I said, come on. So they said, all right, unlimited, as much as you want, as much as you want uh, all month for 30 days. OS 10, Leopard or newer, Internet Explorer 6 or newer, Firefox 3 or newer, Safari 3 or newer, Windows 2000 or newer. And, of course, you have to have high-speed Internet. And the iPad app is free. The iPhone app is free. Imagine doing your office work from your iPhone. That's cool. Go to mypc.com, please. Try it today. And don't forget to use the offer code Windows so that Paul and Mary Jo get the brownie points they deserve. <laughs> they deserve them. Did you see that um, Kmart says it's a conflict? We're not going to sell the Kindle anymore? Kmart yep. or? Was it Kmart or Target or somebody? Target. 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 One, of, one of them guys. Well, they had complained earlier in the year that. I don't think they specified Amazon at the time, but they were basically saying that uh, online shoppers were using Target as a showroom so that people would come in, oh, that sucks. browse, seal the product, and say, yeah, okay, and then they would buy it online. You know, And Amazon even had a promotion, I guess, where if you t- scanned a product in a store and <laughs> oh, send it in, you no could get wonder. 10% off. Something. That sucks. Um, yeah, oh, that's, kind of, geez. that's, kind, of, that's, that's, uh, that's uh, kind of Amazon-esque, yeah. I guess. I think it's in keeping with their, yeah. their whole corporate yeah. thing yeah but yeah I, I guess i understand so that. microsoft does a deal with bnn hmm. right yep yeah they a did. confusing deal oh are we more confused <laughs> well no i, a I mean just faceted a, deal. Right. a many faceted deal a many faceted deal i like okay. stories like this because it kind of makes my morning wait a minute wait a minute wasn't weren't they suing over the nook yes that's yeah. my wrong awesome. they were. Okay. Well, that's yeah, why it's great you, you know you wake up in the morning <laughs> and everything's different they kissed and made up <laughs> They didn't just kiss him. Uh, I mean, it was funny, like they were, it's like they got married, you know? <laughs> it was. And the funniest part to me of the whole press release about about the partnership was, oh, yeah, and we settled with them on that Android patent suit was like way down, like at the bottom of the press release. Oh, one that was line. nothing. It was nothing. It was nothing. just a misunderstanding. Just a little, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'm like, wait, they settled the by, patent by suit. Bygones. Bygones. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and that was big because, you know, uh, Barnes & Noble and Motorola are the only two actually fighting Microsoft over the whole Android patent thing publicly. So one of the two has settled, and now it's only Motorola and Microsoft duking it out in court. And you think this this is the settlement, basically? And And do you think there will be a (laughs) Windows-based nook, as you call it, Mary Jo, a wook? A wook. 
<laughs> Not a wet nook. A wook. A well, and, and, already and, we got the nookie book reader. Uh, what could yeah. what could go wrong with a wook? Well, what, one of my uh, one of my Twitter folks said, um, "Yeah, it's the wook, and it's going to run wook ie wookie." <laughs> wookie. <laughs> Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. You know, at first I was thinking, okay, of course they're going to do a windows based nook and not instead of Android maybe, but in addition to Android. But as, as I looked at more of the documents behind this, um, there is an actual filing that Barnes and Noble made that mentions something called a Microsoft reader that would work with the Barnes and Noble bookstore. So maybe we're asking the wrong question. Maybe it's not going to be, uh, the, you know, BNN product that's a windows based nook maybe it'll be a microsoft reader you know kind of you know, like the, the Xbox, well the same, same there's, thinking. there's a product called reader that's in windows 8 right right, right. Uh, pdf application that they killed recently right no no, no no it's in windows oh, no, 8 there's it's a that, microsoft. two readers i forgot there's two readers and then there's the other microsoft reader program um that was for oh they killed the e-book. the ebook reader they killed yes they killed that Right. But there's a, there's a metro style app called Windows Reader that's in right. Windows 8 that reads PDFs yeah. and I does it read? XPS but it's files. not a Nook because isn't there something special about the Nook Reader? No. Well, no. I'm, what I'm wondering is if if this doesn't mean that that software could be adapted to read Nook titles natively, that you could just use it as a front oh. end to this store. Oh, interesting. Yep, maybe. And Mary Jo, you point out that there are 55 mentions <laughs> of Windows Phone in this uh, filing. 55. Right. I know. It was crazy because I, I just started doing keyword search and I'm like, how many times do they say Windows 8? Once. And how many times do they say Windows Phone? 55. 50 and Windows, Windows, Windows Phone's phone. not even in the press release. <laughs> like they didn't even talk about doing a Nook, um, awesome. a Nook reader for Windows Phone. And it's like, okay, so why is Phone played up so much in this filing? And Windows 8 is kind of downplayed in the filing. What do you think? You know. I never even looked. Is is Nook? I, I just sort of assumed Nook was available as software on Windows Phone. Is it not? I think you know, it is there's not. Been a, uh, there's been an Amazon uh, Kindle thing forever. Yeah, I don't think it's there. Yeah, yeah it's not. That's crazy. No. Right. So what? One of uh, my colleagues at ZDNet, his his theory, Jason Perlo says, what if they suddenly let Barnes and Noble take the Windows Phone OS and make that the operating system on a reader? Maybe that's why there's so many mentions of Windows Phone. So right now you can't do that. Only You can only put the Windows Phone OS on a phone. But if they right. change the screen resolution supported by Windows Phone, maybe which they are. one of them be. Right, which they are. Maybe one of those could be a reader. Wow. There's so many like great conspiracy theories here, right? But we don't know. Oh, oh, another one. St- Surprisingly, still, still we just don't know. Yeah, I, think it'll I be still want a Windows Phone tablet. You do. I really so do, do I. Yeah, I do I really too. Do wish they would do that. Yep. So yeah. So yeah. There's so many interesting parts to that whole deal, though, and I think there's a lot we don't know. If in that filing, there's tons of stuff redacted. Um, so there's there's a lot more to this partnership that isn't public yet. That what, that what is it is like coming. national security related? What do you mean? It's like <laughs> like it's like the Pentagon Papers. Like, sorry, we can't you know publish the names here. Yes, That's crazy. There, if you go through it, there's th- there's a triple asterisk everywhere in that filing where stuff is redacted, and there's hundreds of things that have been redacted from that filing. So yeah, there's lots of intrigue still to come. Interesting, redacted, huh? This is almost like a a government document. Yeah, <laughs> secret secret stuff. I guess the other yeah. thing, I mean, that, but it makes you it makes them. you wonder though, doesn't it? Sorry, Paul. I, I was going to say it's it makes you wonder. You know, was this whole partnership ready to roll? And then the Android patent suit happened. Uh, and so it was like, oh, wait, stop. Okay, now we can roll it out because now we've settled the patent suit. I feel like it's almost like one was predicated on the other. It, it is weird how friendly they are all of a sudden. You know, th- this yeah. this case was on the verge of going to trial. It was going to be the awesome technology patent trial we've all been waiting for. Microsoft's patents will be tested. Will they stand up in the court of law? That's it would be why, insane that's either way. Why they settled. That's why. So I know, but it's crazy. Like, I mean, this was going to be awesome, and now they're, mm-hmm. you know, now they're in bed together, and it's like, what? What uh, just happened? Yeah. I, they hated each other. What? I, did I miss something? I mean, you know, that now they're these close partners, and Microsoft has bought some, I think, seventeen percent stake, if I'm not mistaken, in the, in the new co that will result as they spin off the Nook business, and it, it's, it, it's really amazing to me how much this changed. 
So I guess we'll see. So there you go. But I do, I do think this gives uh, at least the possibility where the Nook could become the ebook, you know, the iBooks, if you will, of the Windows Store. You know, where uh, you could browse for uh, through Barnes and Noble Store via the Windows Store software, which would be huge for for, uh, for Nook. I would I would think, uh, you know, having that inroad in there, um, and possibly even have Nook as something that's pre-installed in Windows Eight, which is maybe a little far-fetched but it's possible certainly yeah the filing actually says no to that the filing oh, says um, the nook app is um, going to be available in the store but it's going to be free um yeah. you know which is yeah. okay. what you okay. expect yeah yeah the kindle app is already there by the way uh yeah is that right yeah it is there yeah mm-hmm. wait is it there <laughs> See, I you wrote this. about it i thought you wrote it about it, it being be one of the um preview apps on yeah, uh, the yeah, consumer yeah. preview is, yeah. God, I was doubting that the second it came out of my mouth. <laughs> well, and remember, our friend who was on Windows Weekly a while back, Brandon Watson, when he left Microsoft, he went to Amazon. And his job at Amazon right, now right, is to manage right. the Kindle app for Windows 8 and the uh, Kindle app for Windows Phone. So I bet that was a, a surprise morning for Brandon Watson on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Never would have happened if you didn't leave. Exactly. He should have stuck around. So um, so when Yahoo started falling apart, it sued Facebook. Now that Nokia has lost 27% of its, of its business over the last three months, what, uh, what could they possibly do? I'm interested, I'm interested that you say it that way. I, 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 I have seen a lot of that kind of, you know, this is the reason why they're doing this kind of uh, You don't think that's the thing. case with Nokia? I, I think it's a little more nuanced than that. Um, you they know, have Apple big is patent also lawsuits against HTC. Apple right has there. big patent lawsuits against other companies yeah, and they're true. dominating the yeah. market. I mean, I'm just, yeah. you know, this is just the era we live in. I mean, I, I think it would be um, irresponsible of Nokia to its shareholders not to do this. You know, okay. if they really, right. you know, I'm just I just want to throw that one out there. No, I mean, no, you're, you're, yeah, um, that's the per, that cooler heads prevailing. I'm just, I'm, I'm not saying that you're not right, I'm di- but I mean, let's at least consider that, you know, someone on Twitter was complaining about this. He called it uh, patent trolling. And I said, patent trolling or, you know, are they just protecting one of their most crucial assets? You know, and he said, and I think his response was something like, I'm just tired of this. Well, okay, but, (laughs) you know, and I no offense. I mean, we we all recognize that you're tired of it. But, you know, these are two humongous companies that have, there are billions of dollars at stake here. And, their entire futures are on the line and so forth. I mean, this is, it's, it is important. I mean, I agree that at the end of this, it's going to seem like World War III because right. these companies are all suing each other and right. it's, we don't it's know how it's going to go. Yeah. yeah. And there are going to be phases of this that are going to be bizarre. There'll be certain markets where someone will win an injunction and someone will be forced to take a product out of the market or change it so that it doesn't, you know, violate some patent. And sometimes there'll be settlements, you know, but we're, we're, we're right in the middle of it, you know, there's just, uh, there's just no way around it. I think we've, we're at DEF CON 1, you know, yep. for patents. It's just mm-hmm. the, where we're at. So the Nokia press release says there are 45 Nokia patents uh, in yeah. one or more actions, uh, including um, dual, Two func- cases each. T- yeah. dual function antennas, power management, and multimode radios, um, as well as to enhance software features including, get this, application stores, multitasking, navigation, yep. conversational message display, dynamic menus, data encryption, and retrieval of email attachments on a mobile device. Holy cow! <laughs> yeah. it's and, and right. And and by the way, every company in this space has patents that sound just as basic as those, right? right? And right. as crucial to every mobile device. That's the problem. Which is what makes this insane. Right. You know, yeah. this is not a two-front war. This is like a 27-front war. And everyone is fighting on all of those fronts, you know. Right. Um, on um, on the Foss Patents blog, you know, Florian Mueller love that tracks blog. all kinds of it's patents. Really a good um, resource. Yeah, it yeah. is. It is. He he thinks he analyzed the forty five patents and said, you know, who they're really going after when you look at all the forty five, they're really mostly going after HTC, is his opinion. Uh, and um, really? he made a case for that and said they're they're the ones who are at, are at the crux of most of this. Well, of the three, uh, HTC, Rim, and ViewSonic, they're the, they are the only ones that are really dominant right, right now. Yeah. And he also brought up, you know, there was the whole pre- uh, precedent to this, which was uh, Nokia versus Apple. And that 
that I think went in Nokia's favor. It, they, they did. Apple uh, ended up paying. Right. I think they paid somewhere in the tune of six hundred million dollars for previous usage, and then licensed the patents. So Apple can license too. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, it, it's rare, but it does happen. Yeah. Um, and uh, and uh, a victory for Motorola Mobility uh, in the in the German courts against Microsoft. Yeah. yeah, although, you know, widely expected and, and no immediate not, not repercussions. Okay. Uh, right. Not enforceable now because yeah. just shortly before that, the U.S. court blocked the ability of the German court to actually stop Microsoft from um, selling Xbox, Windows, and IE in Germany. Ooh, so th wow. there's like a U.S. case and all intertwined with the German case. And yeah, that's yeah that, one, that, that yeah. one's a mess. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, but nobody stops uh, is, has stopped selling anything. You know, I saw a lot of headlines saying, "Okay, Microsoft can't sell the Xbox in Germany anymore." No, nope, not not true. Well, yeah, no people. What if I can't buy Windows Eight? Uh, well, yeah, it's not gonna happen. It's not about that. So, what's <laughs> right. the deal? I mean, oh man, how to even explain this one? It, um, yeah, so I, well, <laughs> it's I suppose it is possible that some it's somewhere down the road that they could. Ha uh, prevent Microsoft from selling certain products in that country. But before that has to happen, or before that can happen, uh, the U.S. court case has to wind down and conclude in to, to some fashion and, and also conclude in a way that is amenable for that to happen. But, you know, the way these things really work is that these companies will settle should that be a possible result. Uh, and Microsoft is no doubt racing to change the way it does things in all of those products. Um, although this is uh, one of those standard essential patent issues, right? This is H.264 it is. playback. It's obviously yeah, semi-crucial. Semi semi yeah, Microsoft's trying to flip the case, actually, to make it all about FRAND, um, the free yeah. reasonable patent stuff, and say, you know, Motorola is trying to charge too much royalty-wise to us for H.264, and so we shouldn't let them charge us those exorbitant rates. So that Microsoft's kind of trying to flip this case to be about FRAND instead of about pat uh, patent you know, who's in the wrong on the patents. Yeah. And I don't even understand how Motorola can sue over something like this. What are they, you know, one of 127 different countries, companies that have a stake in H.264. Um, mm -hmm. This is, you know, this is like scorched earth uh, policy on the part of Motorola, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Apple, Samsung, you want to talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. I know. This whole show well, could be I, 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 Yeah, I, I don't, you know, I often just don't, uh, don't cover these because yeah. it just is endless. Right. Is. Well, I, I, the only thing I'd say about Apple, Samsung that I think is interesting is these guys actually have a date uh, sometime late in May where they're going get to get together and talk settlement. And, it feels um, like Tim Cook does not have Tim, the bloodthirst that uh, Steve Jobs had. Yeah, and he literally said I, I, during the um, conference call after the earnings announcement this past month that... Uh, he would be inclined to settle. He doesn't right. like this kind of uh, right. stuff. So, you know, maybe that's the beginning. It's that kind of thing that I think will help. You know, Microsoft uh, is obviously very aggressive, but their goal with patents is to get people to light or to get other companies to license those patents. And they've been very successful at that. Um, Apple historically so far has been very aggressive just suing. You know, they don't want you to license. They just want you not to use them. Um, they want you out of the market. You know, they don't want you to sell products that look like their products or that use uh, their crucial, what they see as their crucial technologies. You know, Microsoft tends to license. You know, the Nokia I, I suit like against... Like... Sorry, hmm? go ahead, Paul. No, it's okay. Uh, no, I was going to say that. It's like, you know, like Tim Cook saying we want to settle. It reminds me of, you know, when Bill Gates was still running Microsoft, they were very aggressive too, and they were going after everybody and, you know, weren't afraid to, to take it to court. And now, since right. Bill Gates isn't running the company anymore, they are, are a very different company when it comes to patents and legal issues. You know, now it's more like mutually mutually assured destruction is more like the way <laughs> they think now than, yeah, than yeah. like, let's take everybody to court. And, you know, they try to keep the patent stuff out of court, right? I mean, Well, that's, God help that's, us if these things are actually tested. I think that's what they're all afraid right. of. Right. Yeah. And that's why the Barnes & Noble case was so huge because Barnes & Noble was like saying, hey, here's what they wanted us to go under non-disclosure about. And they were ready to like, you know, show the world yeah. the whole like what's behind the curtain and, and Microsoft the, the, the that problem is that you know um, patents are like atomic weapons right you know so during the cold war the united states and the soviet union had whatever arsenal weapons pointed at each other no one wanted them to pull the trigger if it happened it's like it's probably likely that 90% of those would have failed in some way 
but you only need one of them to hit. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. And, and, and patents are just like that. There's no doubt that if this Microsoft case with Barnes & Noble had gone to court, if they were X number of patents involved, that a lot of those things would have been struck down really quickly. But, you know, one or two would get through, and, and those are the ones that are going to kill you. And that's what nobody wants to test. Because on, on Microsoft's end, in this case, you don't want most of your patents thrown out. On Barnes & Noble's case, it doesn't really matter. If any one of them are true, then you're still screwed. Okay, well, uh, you know what? I think I want to move on to something even more exciting, and that is the latest operating system from BlackBerry. But before we do... <laughs> <laughs> I noted a, a, a small hint of sarcasm. <laughs> I know you've all been waiting for the latest, and we've got the deal coming up. But first, a word from our friends at Squarespace. Everything you need to build an exceptional website, an amazing website, including hosting, including the domain, including analytics, including the best software ever for content management, for creating a blog or a photo gallery or... Uh, e-commerce site, whatever it is you want to put on the web, this is the place to go. And here's the beauty part. If you go to Squarespace and click this green Start Your Site button, you would uh, you could try this free. You don't need a credit card. You don't need anything but a name of a site, a password, and an email address. You could start this for two weeks, absolutely the run of the place. Anything you want to do, all of the, use all the tools, the integration of the social media stuff like Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, the uh, templates that aren't templated, uh, beautiful stuff, uh, and, and and the statistics and the iOS and Android apps, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the month of May is a great time. If you've been putting off signing up for a Squarespace account, they're now offering free domain registration when you sign up for an annual plan. It's integrated within the sign-up process. So if you've got a domain name... You know, I think one of the things that kind of made people nutty is the idea that, oh, okay, I've got a domain name, and now I have a squarespace.com site, and then you have to, it's not hard, but you have to go through some configuration to get it so that the domain name points to Squarespace. They're going to do it all for you, and they're even going to throw in setup and the domain registration for free when you sign up for a year. So this, you know, if you've got fancypants.com and, you know, you're ready to do it, you could go to squarespace.com right now. The prices, uh, they completely updated the pricing. If you haven't looked recently, you must look now. It starts for, at $8 a month. That's for hosting and the software for everything. That's when you buy uh, a, an annual plan, $10 month to month. The full unlimited plan is an incredible deal. This is unlimited pages, unlimited bandwidth, unlimited storage, unlimited. Unlimited bandwidth. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. And that's $16 a month when you buy an annual plan. Plus, the domain registration is free. Plus, 10% off your first purchase on a new account when you use our offer code. So, all in all, this is the time if you've been putting it off. Windows 5 is the offer code. 5 for May, the fifth month of the year. So, you still have some time. You can go to squarespace.com. Try it free for two weeks. Set up a site. You get to keep that site. And when you sign up, make sure you use the offer code Windows Five to save ten percent, and uh, and get all these things like the domain registration free, and the really good deals. I mean, I just think this is the time. If you've been waiting, if you want a new website, if you're tired of your old web hosting, you want to do better. Squarespace.com. Everything you need. Use the offer code Windows Five. Windows and the number five to get 10% off your first purchase. So go get the whole year. That's what I would do. You get the best price and 10% off. And Paul just grinds his teeth every time I do this ad because he's he doesn't have a choice. You but know, you do. I am. Um, you do. I actually, I pay for Squarespace. Oh, you have a Squarespace site too? Is I, your blog? I, no, I don't, no, no, I don't have a site. I just pay for the service and I, I pretend that I use it because... <laughs> I can't use it at work, but I want to use it. And, and he, I, he wants to so bad. You have no idea. I, oh, Paul. So I do. I actually have an account. What? Really? You're not joking? I, I do. No, I do. I have one. I just can't use it. I'm not using it yet. Someday. I, I hope, hope to use it. Someday. 
Squarespace. Is that is that pathetic? Is that like having a poster of a band in your bedroom you and know, dreaming? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, someday I will be on that stage. I'm going to marry Duran Duran. You know, it's the great a great story. I was just you know, as you know, I was in Norway for the Nordic Light Photography Festival, and mm-hmm. all of their stuff is on Squarespace. Their their website. Oh, their thanks blog. for rubbing it. <laughs> I mean, and it's gorgeous. They've done a great job. It really is fun. Yeah. Um. And it's because, you know, Odinga, the guy who uh, is their kind of their tech guy, he said, I, you know, because of you, I put everything on Squarespace. And now I think I think the entire town of Christensen is using Squarespace. It's kind of amazing. Squarespace.com. Use the offer code Windows 5. Okie dokie. Let us move on to uh, BlackBerry 10. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that. It's just a joke. <laughs> well, I don't know. Right, so uh, have you played with it? Ago? Is it worth? Is it worth? Oh, I have not. I'm immense. a BlackBerry fan, or I was. Well, you know, I had a BlackBerry for a long time. I, my problem with this is that it really does remind me of WebOS, which is uh, they've come up with something that looks great. It's too little, um, too late. Yeah, it's too late. It's too bad. So it looks good. You know that. That's what I'm. Uh, you know, that's too bad. It's just too bad. Now, there's a note here that says, you've heard from Microsoft Insiders. Mm-hmm. What? What have you heard? This guy must be misreading this. Well, <laughs> so in the past, when you talked about, you know, I talked to people at Microsoft, obviously, on and off the record. Sure. And, and one of the conversations, you know, we've had over the years is, you know, what happens if Windows Phone fails? You know, what, ha- you know, what, what are you going to do? You know, and there was no room for failure in the past. It was always very clear that uh, this is something that's not, it can't fail. We, we will stick with this as long as it takes. And, um, you know, I'd bring up the Zune example. Well, okay, but you said you were, you know, you were in it for the long haul with Zune and you kind of you did your little three, four year run there and, and then you gave up on the devices. So, you know, you're going to do that with Windows Phone? And the answer was always no. You know, Windows Phone is core to us. You know, the MP3 players were not core to the Microsoft business. That, that was, you know, it, we obviously wanted it to be successful, but it wasn't. That's okay. It doesn't kill us. Um, but now, you know, I <laughs> just had a conversation where it was like, well, we're not actually sure this thing's ever going to be successful. And um, that's interesting to me because this, this is a little bit of an about face and it happened pretty quickly. Um, I'm not saying this is like the official strategy or whatever, you know, that now they're planning for it to fail. But there is some contingent there at least where uh, they're not really happy with the way this has gone and really have expected it to turn around by this point. And uh, I guess we'll see what happens this year with the Lumia and whether or not that can uh, jumpstart a little something. I mean, I, I I do feel like Windows Phone market share is kind of leveled off as far as it's going to go down. Um, if that's not the case in, you know, the third quarter of this year or whatever, if it's still down in the 1.6% or whatever they're at, um, you know, that's, that's a problem. Because one of the big questions with smartphones and one of the reasons that this Rim BlackBerry thing is, is obviously too little too late is that, we don't. We didn't know how many platforms this market could accommodate. You know, and the theory was well, obviously at least two, but you know, maybe it's three, maybe it's four. You know, right. we don't know. Right. Um, it looks. It, it's looking increasingly like a, a two-way race, isn't it? It may not yeah. even be a two-way race. I mean, the latest stuff uh, from the carriers is that, when, you know, Apple is just like outselling everybody by two to one. It, on uh, Verizon and well, Sprint. And, well, we don't know Sprint for sure, but Verizon. Well, that's U.S. I mean, you know, actually, US. Samsung, uh, right. Samsung uh, uh, outsold Apple in the last quarter. So, um, Not in the U.S. Not in the U.S. I mean, overall. Yeah, um, but, but Verizon and AT&T both are saying, I think, what was it, 78% of all smartphones sold on Verizon are iPhones? So it's it's at best a two carrier race, maybe. Yeah. Two well, and I half. think there's always room for. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I mean, but there's I, I no don't room think for gonna... BlackBerry at this point. There's no room for Nokia so. except for the Windows Phone. Um, but Paul, Paul, if they if they are starting to admit this, because I haven't heard anybody. This at is a shock. This, it's a shock, yeah. and um, if they so oh, yeah. if this happens this and they decide like, hey, it's um, it, we, we can't make a go of this. So what would they do? They need. A smartphone play, don't they? I mean, they can't just not think, be there. I think they do. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't. Well, and it may be, you know, any any sensible company hopes for the best, but plans for the worst. I mean, you just this well, is part of being a business. Is you well, what would happen if? It doesn't mean that they're right. go, they're right, saying right, right. it's going to happen. I, I would put it this way. For example, 
you could make this argument for various types of platforms. We plan for the entire collapse of Twit at every turn. <laughs> As you should, Leo. Yes, I should, <laughs> yes. No. And I don't um, think, you know, that's not revealing no, anything. No. I, so, so Microsoft doesn't have a social networking play, right? I mean, they don't, you know, their strategy there was we'll work with others, you know. Um, I've sort of argued in as the world moves forward and it's more heterogeneous and Microsoft isn't it anymore, you know, that they're part of the pie, not the biggest part or the only part, but part of it, you know, that um, Microsoft is not a very long lived company. They've done things for a little while that have worked out and maybe they need to change a little bit. I mean, why can't Microsoft supply the major OS platforms with great applications like office and gaming platforms like Xbox live and so forth and do that. I mean, um, there are different ways that this could go. Um, you know, so we'll see. But uh, yeah, I would think that Windows Phone is core to what they do. But on the other hand, as these devices gain in sophistication, I suppose you could just make an argument for, well, maybe it just becomes Windows. You know, mm -hmm. uh, maybe Windows becomes their play across all of these device types. And that um, Microsoft isn't so much concerned with, you know, what percentage of people are holding the little device in their head and making phone calls with it, but rather that those capabilities are available in a range of devices. And what we're really concerned is that Windows itself has some important uh, number of users or whatever, regardless of the device uh, type. So I'm just guessing here, by the way. I mean, this is not anything anyone told me. But, you know, I guess there are di different ways to look at it. I always yeah, thought that are... the phone was, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, there are definitely different ways they could make money. Like they could make money by selling apps for the phone, right? Or... Um, you know, creating the management, management infrastructure services, for them. Right, managing yeah. those devices in the enterprise, yeah. which is something they are doing yeah. right now. So, I just, I, it's just so shocking because, I mean, just last year, I, I remember talking to somebody at Microsoft who said, you know, we're we're in this for like the long haul. Like when you sign up to work on the Windows <laughs> Phone team, you commit to five years. Like it's not like, like we're going to go, okay. By and, the way, they I know, said and that. things haven't they panned out. Soon. They said that about they soon. Did. I'm just... Yeah. Well, but to me, Zoom, Zoom that is literally I exactly you commit what for five years or the failure of the product, whichever comes first. Maybe, maybe that was what it was. But um, I, I always just kept thinking of Windows Phone like Xbox, right? Like at the beginning, they were not successful with Xbox. Sony owned that market and they kept right. saying, yeah. they said, we're going to stay and we're going to keep pouring money in there and we're going to stay yes. with it. And we don't care yep. if we take a and, huge and loss. So. I thought We've this had was those like discussions that. about, you know, it's early days, you know, the market yep. changes and everything. But, you know, the other yep. thing, and this is an interesting trend to me. We, we've also talked in the past about how, um, you know, Microsoft took X number of years to kind of grow to prominence. And then Google did it in half the time. And, and there is a, a kind of quickening, if you will, not like a Highlander quickening, but a, a, a quickening of time <laughs> where these markets coalesce and become mature much more quickly than they did in the past. You know, the PC matured over a very slow period of time. Uh, smartphones, more quickly. Tablets, much more quickly. Um, it's possible that we expected this to be some kind of a 10-year run where things would then be decided. And maybe it's really a five-year run. You know, I mean, we, we actually are, are we not, I think, almost five years into the iPhone. Um, 2007, yeah, we are. In June, we'll be five years. Roughly. Yeah. So, God, that's hard to believe. yeah. Right. I mean, so it's it's kind of a cute thing to say, like, you know, the iPhone changed everything. Of course it did. But, you know, the iPhone actually kind of changed everything. So, uh, <laughs> really? well, I mean, it really did. It's not it really just did. a saying. It's no, not it really did. Ad. No, it it's really not an did. Apple ad. It's, yeah. you know, it really did change everything. Yeah. And, um, you know, we'll see. I mean, um, yep. Palm was a big deal, a really yep, the sure. big deal. And they're gone. You know, so Nokia, Nokia yep. a couple of years ago was it market share wise. They owned they owned it. They're on the way down. RIM, US yeah. version of Nokia, same thing, on the way down. So I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I'm not don't get me wrong, I'm not giving up a Windows phone. I love Windows phone. I, I, I still would argue that it's superior to the other platforms in, in most ways that are meaningful, but um, it needs to sell, you know, and uh, I hope Microsoft does stick with it if it doesn't sell. I, I would like the synthesis, I guess, uh, between Windows and Windows phone to be much more than it will be even in Windows Phone 8, I think. And and I guess we'll see how that happens going forward. But uh, I mean, do I you know. think you know, do you think there's even a, a remote thought of buy RIM that's plan B? No. What would they no. that, why would you know, they buy that's RIM? That's a rumor that keeps that rumor I, keeps coming up. I don't know why they would. What would um, they don't need RIM. 
It would be more like they're acquiring yeah. the customers. The thinking would be uh, that, I think. Well, because now, now well, okay, now, I, 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 because uh, RIM is very, still very enterprise specific, very focused on enterprise. Microsoft is a big enterprise company. Maybe you're right. Maybe that would give them such a lead in enterprise that they could ignore the consumer market. I don't, so, it, you know, it, it's hard to say. Here's this RIM product that they need, right? There's a BlackBerry Enterprise server where you could argue, okay, well, they could pull that functionality into System Center probably for managing devices, uh, make it part of Exchange Active Sync, or however they want to do it, whatever the theory is there. Um, okay. But, you know, as far as the phones, I mean, RIM itself is in the middle of a major transition to a new system that is completely unproven. Um, you know, this BlackBerry 10 thing is based on a tablet operating system for a device that nobody bought and they're kind of touting it as their next new thing for a phone and I, you know this is doesn't seem like a huge winning strategy to me so i don't i just don't i don't see rim be, of course i didn't see skype being a, a strategic yeah. purchase me for neither. them either and i certainly never saw them partnering with nook you know with barnes and noble and nook so <laughs> So yes, what you just said makes perfect sense. Uh, <laughs> they, should, they will probably they will Given probably that we have no tomorrow. idea what they're doing. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, because that's one of those rumors that keep coming back and coming back, and and I'm like, okay, I don't, you know, once they did the deal with Nokia, I'm like, no, now they're definitely not going to buy Rim because they basically bought Nokia, right? But I mean, if I mean, could three underdogs pull together to become an overdog? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, so they should buy T-Mobile in that case. <laughs> uh, one, one of the stories I saw, uh, just the headline of it, didn't really read, was something along the lines of, you know, Nokia makes more money on every Android sold than they do on their own devices. So they make more on Android than they do on their own devices. That might the be theory true being that they're Microsoft, that, right? Too, they're right? licensing, yeah, patents. Okay, um, it's not a pretty business. It's not the type of thing that's going to get consumers excited, but. You know, I, I guess you could make this argument. If you can make money that way, what's the difference? I mean, ultimately, as far as shareholders are concerned, I mean, you're trying to make money. Trying to make money, I think, is what you're trying to do, right? So, I, I don't know. <laughs> this is so often the case. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think the, the reason I mentioned this, though, is just that it's always been the same story. You know, when you talk to people... You know, yeah, we're in this. Don't worry about it. We're in this. You know, we're in this. And now it's like, yeah, I don't. Nah, I'm not so sure anymore. <laughs> you know, and it's <laughs> it's not really what you want to hear. You know. Well, we know they're at least in it till June twentieth, right? That's when they're having their next big <laughs> yeah, yeah. Windows Developer they, Conference right, in San they Francisco. Right, the BlackBerry Ten switch over. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what that is. Yeah. So yeah, they they did announce that today. In fact, that they're going to have a, a developer conference in San Francisco, June twentieth and twenty first. They haven't allowed people to sign up for it yet, but um, I'm guessing that's where they start talking about Windows Phone eight Apollo, probably, and yep. tell developers what they're doing there and and kind of what they need to know to start thinking about apps for the phones that are due this year, unless Paul's Plan B comes to pass. I don't. Th no, no, no. Don't get me wrong. I, 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 I don't have a plan B. I, it's more along the lines I know. of this. Is, what they're going to talk about is still going to happen. Windows Phone 8 yeah. is coming. There's no I don't mean anything yeah. like that. Like they're not going to just right, no. close up shop. Um, no, this is still happening. You know, Windows Phone 8 will be interesting. It's going to be very much like Windows 8, of course. Um, maybe not as much like Windows 8 as some would hope. But, um, you know, similar developer tools and um, yeah. And a APIs. lot more enterprise focus too, which is good for people who've been kind of dragging their feet about buying the phone for work. They're adding things like encryption and BitLocker yep. and uh, doing a lot right. of things All those that things people have been that asking. Have prevented deployments um, in Microsofts in the one market that would have been interested in the Microsoft phone in the past year. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, not to not to question a strategy, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Paul, you got an article uh, from May Day, uh, how not to fix Windows Phone Marketplace. I thought they were cleaning it up. Yeah, so that was this is a hard one for me because you know again I, I love Windows Phone and 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 you want to think that they're doing the right thing. I need to go look at my four points so I get this exactly correct. But um, I saw the blog post they had made about uh, how they were cleaning up the marketplace, and I, and I started to write an article called "Microsoft is making changes with the marketplace." Mm. I thought this. Good for mm -hmm. them. Cleaning it up I, and like getting rid of junk apps and stuff like that? or Yeah, in other words, they, they, they identified four issues with the Windows Phone Marketplace. And um, 
and and work in their solution for those problems. You know, uh, the interesting thing is that number one was is an issue that I happen to be very familiar with because I talk to Raphael all the time, and Raphael is the guy who keeps complaining to them that there are all these intellectual property violations in the Windows Phone marketplace. And how did that happen? How do you, how do you approve? There's obviously an app approval process. There's a guy ripping off Sega and Nintendo games and just republishing right, them with ROMs right. and things. And and how do you how does that stuff sail through the app approval process? Microsoft's response at the time, and it was it's one that is uh, voiced in this blog post as well, is that they only respond to these kind of trademark and uh, IP issues, copyrights, when the owner of the trademark or copyright complains. That's that's when they take action. So, in other words, you could rip off something. You could make a BMW thing or whatever it is, steal all their IP, make an app, or just steal someone else's game. You know, maybe someone made a game on the iPhone. Steal it, republish it on Windows Phone. They won't do anything about that unless the person who owns that original property complains about it. And I, so, okay, well, clearly they're going to fix this problem, right? Uh, no, they're, they're not going to change the way they do things at all. In, instead, what they did was they provided some advice to developers about how not to infringe on someone else's intellectual property. In other words, they put the, the they're basically just telling people, well, just don't do this, you know. And they're like, and by the way, here's why you don't want to do it. It's expensive for us and time consuming to have to investigate these things. So it would be better for us if you just didn't do it. That's what they told developers, you know. That's amazing to me. Uh, it's amazing. So I uh, that. Much like this building Windows A post where you think it says one thing and then you read it and it says another thing. It's, it was a little surprising to me. Um, there's one about the quality of apps, you know. Um, I, I, you know, I, just as the canonical example, I looked up to see the hilarious farting apps that exist in the Windows <laughs> for Marketplace. You'll be delighted to discover there are many of them. Well, that's and, true on um, Apple, too. I mean, that's of course, yeah, of course. a big market. I guess it is. Yes. Um, <laughs> but the, <laughs> so the problem is, Microsoft doesn't actually care about low-quality apps, as it turns out. What they care about are apps where it's really the same app that's been multi-posted as slightly different apps. Different names, but it's really the same app. Or the exact same app with a different, you know, tile, a graphic, or whatever. I guess a lot of people are actually, like, doing these bulk submissions. And so they're actually going to crack down on that. And, yeah, okay. Um, that, and that's neat. And then the third issue was about keywords. This one's hilarious. So... Microsoft has a policy where you can only have five keywords associated with an app. And I guess the keywords are for searching or uh, categorizing purposes in the marketplace. However, many app developers were submitting their apps with more than five keywords. And those keywords, would act, they would get through. So they would get to the marketplace and they would have seven keywords or eight or ten keywords. So, <laughs> I mean, my question to that is like, well... If you have a limit of keywords, why don't you limit the submission so that they can only submit five keywords? Why would why would you allow there to be more than five? So th that one they're actually going to fix. Um, so there you go. That's something they are fixing. <laughs> it's a problem of their own making. And then the fourth one was about, um, uh, not necessarily, I guess, sexually explicit apps. Um, when Windows Phone was still in its gestation period, there was a post that Microsoft made just about two years ago where they, they announced they would not allow porn on Windows Phone. Um, last week, there was a story in TechCrunch titled, Windows Phone Has a Nasty Porn Addiction, which uh, kind of contradicts Microsoft's stated purpose. And so in this post this past week, Microsoft wrote that it was committed to offering a, a, diver a diverse selection of safe and quality apps that appeal to a wide range of customer interests. <laughs> um, so they do not allow apps that contain sexually suggestive or provocative images or content, but... It does permit the kind of content you occasionally see on primetime TV or the pages of a magazine swimsuit issue. As I wrote, in other words, it'll, it does allow sexually suggestive or provocative images of content. So um, I, I, they're going to apparently uh, pay more attention to this kind of thing. They're going to ensure that a lot of the app icons, uh, you know, the tiles and so forth, aren't overly uh, sexual so that, you know, if a kid was scrolling through the marketplace, they wouldn't see you know, stuff they shouldn't see. But, you know, I don't know. I, th this stuff to me just speaks to the immaturity of the marketplace as it is, that there's there are no there's no sense of parental control perhaps where if you knew that the person was logged in with a an account on Windows Live that was controlled by parental controls, which, by the way, you can do, that they wouldn't see those kind of apps, you know, that um, it just... 
I don't know. It doesn't seem like they're doing much there. So I would say of the three of the four issues they raised, the, the most minor of the four, they're fixing uh, something they should, that should never have been wrong in the first place, their own problem. And the other three, they're basically doing almost nothing. In fact, they're, they're giving you tips as a developer how to uh, do their job for them. You know? And so I find this whole thing to be sort of um, unfortunate. You know? They're not really fixing you know, anything. What's funny, though, you look in the comments on this, right, and, and on that blog post, and the developers are, like, up in arms, of course. They're like, well, thanks for giving us a heads up, Microsoft. Thanks for really tightening the noose around our necks and making these huge changes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's it's kind of hilarious, right? Like you're saying that these are not real, really big deal changes, and the developers well, I, are in there like, I, hey. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to show you this because it, the, the, Raphael showed me an example of a developer who had violated two of these ones, and one of them was the sexual one. But... Um, it was basically a, a guy who had, had multi-posted almost exactly the same app, but with different tiles. All of them invo involved scantily clad women. It went on for pages and pages. And it was just the same thing over and over and over again. And so this violates two of Microsoft's stated rules here, you know. Um, my, my thing is simply that this stuff was, you know, you, you, you've started a, a store. You, you establish rules. You know, it's up to you to do this. I mean, that, that's... If this is going to be safe, and, and I mean safe in all ways possible, that's your responsibility as the owner of the store. Um, I just find this to be very irresponsible. So, you know, uh, it's just... It's I just, just, I just want it to be easier to find good apps. And, yeah. you know, it is when you use the web marketplace. But, right, it, but even that, it's still like I feel like I sift through so many things when I'm trying to find yeah. an app. You know, I'm, I'm probably won't be able to do this off the top of my head, but there is a, you know, it's amazing to me how bad a lot of the stuff is on the marketplace. The, um, uh, when you buy a Nokia phone, they have an app called App Highlights. They, they actually update really regularly. And it, it is what you're asking for. It's a, it's a subset of the full store and it's curated by Nokia employees who find apps that they really like and think are useful and they highlight them literally for you. And it's, it's just like a little, it's just like, you know, a hundred apps instead of the thousands and thousands. But, you know, even when you know what you're looking for, you can go into, that's not the one. I'm trying to figure out. There's, there's one of the, I don't know if it was SkyDrive or. Um, a lot I was of looking times for you, Skype. Like yeah, I was, was looking so, in the micro marketplace for Skype and I couldn't find yeah, it for a while. Yeah, and you can't find it sometimes. Or, or, well, is that a, I did, that's a failure in search though. Right, but search being part of the whole platform. In other words, um, it's still a, a failure of the marketplace really, right? How sad is right. it when you go to a marketplace and you know exactly what you want and you can't get it? You know, yeah, I found all these things with the word Skype in the name. That were before none of the which Skype was app Skype. and the search results. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yep. No, yeah. and, and that's, I'm sorry, but that's just poor. You know, it's just poor. Yeah. So, you know, the reason, I, I guess I, I think of this like, you know, so, of course I write something like this, of course, and I, you get responses from people like, I thought you were a fan of Windows Phone. What the hell is this? You know? And, and I guess the way I think of it is, you know, if my kid comes home with all C's and D's on my report card, I don't just tell him he's, he's doing great. Don't worry about it because I love him. I, you know, I, I, you have to complain about that. And, you know, you complain because you love it, <laughs> you know, because you want it to be as good as it can be. Um, and this is not as good as it can be. And I have a problem with that. And, uh, and for them to put up a post where it appears like they're taking action to solve problems. And then you actually read, I mean, it's, it's, it's in the public. You can read it yourself. They're not really fixing anything. It's too bad. I just don't like to see that. Yeah. Well, you know, they, maybe they want to be a carrier. They don't want to be responsible, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> like, like YouTube, they prefer the take. -up. I guess. I mean. Apple, you I, know, no. Apple pretends that it looks at everything, but they, they don't. They it's don't. obvious. Yeah. It's very difficult. Now, this whole thing is difficult. I mean, I, it's weird because, uh, for example, I like the Amazon App Store for Android better than the Google one for a couple of reasons. But one of them, honestly, is just a slice in time thing. It just so happens for that for this very brief period of time, it just it's limited. There just there aren't hundreds of thousands of apps in there. I mean, now there are, but you know, you, they're going to start out with the best ones, right? Because they're new eventually they're going to grow and grow and grow and then it's going to be awful, you know. Um, at some point, the sheer size of the store becomes a problem. It's a weird thing to complain about, but I actually really do think it's a problem in iOS. They, it's almost like they let too much in. You know, the, it, it makes it hard to find anything. Um, you know, Windows Phone, unfortunately, there's, it, it's more than that. I, I, I do think there are a substantial number of apps there and, and that, that in some ways contributes to the issue, but 
certainly there are too many bad apps too. And, and there's not a lot of discerning looks at it. I mean, I don't know how you would, I, I don't know how or why, or if you could even reject something just because it was bad. But you know, the primary rule of Windows Phone Marketplace, as I understand it, is that your app provides some form of unique value. Um, I, I think a lot of apps in the Windows Phone Marketplace are not uh, meeting that little requirement, you know. But they're coming from behind, and I don't think they're thinking like that. <sighs> Can we move on now? <laughs> are you depressed enough about no, Windows Phone? No, I'm happy. Happy go lucky. <laughs> and one other thing, Leo. Steve Wozniak <laughs> loves the Windows Phone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I wanted to complain Thank about goodness. that. <laughs> Who cares? You know, <laughs> you know well, I got to tell you, I know, ad, I, I know Steve really, really well. And Steve yep. is a, one of the. He is the nicest guy you'll ever meet, and he will. Right. He will say anything to anybody yep. to make them happy. Right, which is why the, his opinion is absolutely worthless <laughs> in this case. You know, I would be really, I would be much more impressed if Steve Jobs had said he liked Windows. Yeah, Phone. that ain't gonna happen. That, well, that no, for obvious no, reasons. But, but I mean, but, I, that would never have happened well, any more than you know, Bill Gates would let his kids buy an iPhone. Right. <laughs> yeah. right? Um, there was a recent Apple, uh, it might have even been the most recent one, I don't remember. But, you know, every once in a while, Apple will throw out a bone to Windows Phone or Windows maybe where they'll, they'll actually mention it. You know, they'll say something like, let's not forget, it. you know, Microsoft has a horse in this race too, I think was one of the quotes. And we can't leave those guys out. You know, that's as close as you're ever going to get from the Apple side is a, a, like a, an implicit acknowledgement that there is a competitor for Microsoft and, you know, that they need to pay attention to how that thing's doing and. Uh, and so forth. But, you know, Steve Wozniak um, obviously placed secured in the annals of computer history, but, you know, his opinions about Windows Phone, sadly, are uh, irrelevant, you know, and it's too bad. But it's just the way it is. So I'm glad he likes it, but he likes everything. So I don't know. Yeah, he does. He that. basically likes everything. So, yeah, that's, that's neat. But all he's doing is reiterating what I already know. Yeah, I know. It's beautiful. I got it. Thank you. Thank you for admitting that. But it just doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't really add, you know, much to the, there's going to be an ad system. you watch there's going to be an ad with steve wozniak holding a bag <laughs> a la robert scoble with a windows phone in it <laughs> right he'll be running out of the store with the nokia bag exactly you one. heard it here first i got the first one <laughs> yeah, and you know and you know what people are going to say they're going to be like who's that old guy <laughs> here's the good you news know? i mean like he won't have to wait in line that long so yeah. you know wow 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 okay that was that was a low blow no, that's how we deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> he waited all night in line to get yeah, the yeah. get the new iPad, but he likes Who waiting wouldn't? in line. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Yep. No, I'm just just teasing the old Windows phone folks. One more story before we get our picks of the week. Yes. The uh, I saw this and I was it was very interesting. I want you to explain the ninety nine dollar Xbox. <laughs> what what? How could Just that be? Just a rumor. Oh, Just it's a not rumor real? Oh, I thought it was real. Rumor for the time being. But I pay a monthly fee for it? Is that how it works? Yeah, that's the idea. Like you'd pay a subscription fee for two years. I get Xbox uh, and Connect. Do, do I get like a, the starter edition Xbox or do I get an you know, actual hard drive in there? <laughs> if you, and if you Xbox? stop paying, do they come into your door and take yeah, it away? Do they, they do. Take it? Yep. They do. They rip it out of your home. No. <laughs> but did my kids just finish this game of Connectimals? No. <laughs> but you know, so what's what's actually interesting is when you add up all these things and you say, "Oh wow, ninety nine bucks and a two year subscription." Wow, I'm making out like a bandit. When you actually add up how much an Xbox costs now. And what you pay for Xbox Live now, it's a wash, pretty much. It would be like you're paying the same thing. You just It's just a different configuration of, you know, what the parts look like. So it might attract, if it does ever happen, it might attract a new group of people who are more interested in like a low entry level way to get into the Xbox world. I, I By the and way, then, I, A, I hope this doesn't happen. But B, I hope it fails if it does. And, and here's why. God help us if Microsoft is ever successful getting people to keep paying for something like this, right? This is like the cell phone model, except you're already paying for Xbox Live as well, so now they're getting you to also pay for the hardware over time. It's like you never really own the thing, you know? You're just making payments every month. It's a subscription. You know, they tried this with uh, netbooks. Remember, you know, uh, Radio yeah, Shack and yeah, yeah. cellular companies were selling netbooks for $99, but you could get, you know, you had to pay 40 bucks a month or 50 bucks a month for a... Um, you know, for wireless connectivity, it's like, uh, this is just, 
they tried it with Office. You know, they, Microsoft is desperate to get consumers to pay for stuff forever, just like they do to enterprises. You know, this is it, God help us if this takes off. This is the this will be the future of Microsoft. You thought it's the like product software be assurance, stuff. software yeah. assurance for the Xbox, right? Yeah, consumer <laughs> assurance, exactly. Yeah, it's exactly yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and th that's what Microsoft wants. They want more things on a subscription model, right? Because that's revenue you oh, can count on. Is there anything on better than a little bit of money all the time? <laughs> no, no, seriously. Nothing. I mean, right? It's, it's an they don't annuity. want like, a little high, highs and lows are bad for a company. Right. They want money. Consistent. They want guaranteed money. Yeah, guaranteed yep, money. Yep. Consistent. Yeah, and you know the the other thing is we talked about this when we talked about their earnings. You know, the Xbox division's earnings were down um, in the last right. quarter, and so maybe this is just like, hey, how do we get? the last bit of juice out of the Xbox before we have to start talking about the next Xbox, right? Uh, man, it's Maybe. like bleeding a Maybe stone. So. You know, the, the market is down. It's not, the Xbox is doing right. poorly relatively, not because the Xbox is bad. It's still number one. It's just that the market the overall market itself is down. is not doing, yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, is that because of saturation or the economy or what? That's lack, a good question, actually. I, don't, I think it's saturation. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, it's yeah, a I video don't... game, right? It's a video game console market that's down. It's not the consoles right. market in general. It's just the hardcore video game because they, these part. these <laughs> all three of the major video games have been out for years. If you wanted one, yeah, you yeah, got yeah. one. Paul's you know, already got so many Xboxes. There's no know, more. <laughs> I uh, I was gonna say I have actually really a cynical response to this would be that you know they finally fixed the reliability problems with the Xbox 360. Now people aren't buying them over and over again. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's actually uh, true it's for like me. They, they finally I kept fixed buying the thing Xboxes. And now, and now I don't have yeah. to keep buying them. Like no, this one's just actually been working. That's for actually true for me. Yeah. Um, it, because I don't, it hasn't red ringed in, in a whole year. This one is never red ringed. Yeah. Though, as far as yeah, the newest yeah. one, I guess I got what, what, I don't know if it's the elite or whatever it was, the black one. I love yeah. it. Yep. And never red ringed. So I didn't buy any more. Yeah. See, th that turned out to be a bad business plan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Let them fail. Have, uh, yeah, that's yeah, good. If those things failing was the best thing we ever did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, actually think that's it. No, but. no, no. I think it's saturation. I really do. I mean, you know, who doesn't have one at this point? It, that's why it, the Kinect sold so well. It was a new product. Yeah. The, right. So I think, you know, obviously... W when you know whenever it happens microsoft sony nintendo will release new hardware and they'll they'll get whatever reduced big bang they can get out of that because right. i think the market for these things is going down um thanks to other forms of more casual gaming through you know online services like facebook and obviously the uh smartphones and tablets and so forth but um you know they always relied on these big events you know for halo uh, for microsoft rather it was the halo type events call of duty events that happen one a year but i i think these things are kind of reduced expectations over time because, you know, ultimately we're still playing, you know, it's the same console. Where it's, you know, the, yet another version of Gears of War, yet another version of Call of Duty, yet another version of Halo. You know, I mean, at some point you need that hardware bump as well. Um, but I don't, I don't, you know, I'd like to be proven wrong. I mean, I, I still play video games regularly on a console and prefer it uh, to other forms of gaming. But you have to think that the market for this kind of thing compared to other more casual forms of games is much smaller, you know, um, just, well, this way, I mean, they've had some enormous successes, uh, entertainment wise, but still, uh, I think that points to why Microsoft two is going for the living room play with the Xbox 360, right? That they see the gaming part of it isn't as important, you know, as it used to be in the beginning. Let's take a, a break. And uh, when we come back, your picks, your tips, your tools, your all that crap. Your <laughs> <laughs> it's the, the back of the book. Is coming up, I just want to say, I missed you. <laughs> you were gone. Here comes the back of the book. You know, I don't know about you, but uh, back, remember when uh, they actually printed computer magazines on paper? And I, and you <laughs> would, I would get Computer Shopper, and I wouldn't read the front of the book. I'd right. go right to the back of the book. Same thing with PC Magazine. I always wanted like the tips and tricks and stuff. This is our. This is the best part. The back of the book. The back of the book is coming up, folks. The this is where if John C. Dvorak were on the show, this is where we'd stick him. <laughs> Wait, just, it's exactly where we'd stick him. <laughs> we'd stick him right here. But first, 
I'd like to do a little Audible thing. And actually, this is a pick, too, because uh, Paul and I are huge Audible fans. And whenever we uh, start talking about audiobooks, we kind of start talking about our favorite audiobooks from audible.com. I'm going to tell you how you can get a free book in just a moment. But first, go to audible.com and take a look at all the books. So many. The new Robert Caro just came out. Um, Lyndon Johnson. He's been doing, this is the longest biography yeah, it's like a multi-part one. Yeah, I'm probably gonna. I'll I read probably, the first two, so I, yeah. I, I'm presuming this is the third and final part five, one. isn't it? Or, or part no, five, is it? Wow. Thought so. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I read. Uh, oh, maybe this is all of them together. No, uh, no, no, no. This is like this is like the Kennedy. This is the Kennedy, Kennedy and the last years. Yeah. yeah, because Master of the Senate was amazing. Yeah, that was. Uh, so that, it's only part. You're saying it's it is part three then? Yeah, is I think it's part three. Something like that. I'm looking. I don't know. Um, I love Robert Kerr. Anyway, that's, I'm just pointing this out, that there are a ton of great things. This is, if you like history, as Paul and I do, fantastic. Here's, a, here's an interesting thing. 20, this is at the top of the page. 20 great ways to use your credits. And these are all uh, single credit uh, books. By it's most like 50 of the books. ways to leave your lover. Yeah. 20 great ways to use your credits. You know why they pick <laughs> these? These are single credit books that are over 30 hours long. They're all like huge. The Robert Carroll book is 33 hours long. I'm reading The Stand right now. Uh, I don't know how many freaking hours, 48 hours or something. Um, so what do you got for us, Paul? What's your recommendation? I've been sort of looking into classic sci-fi lately. Oh, you know? they've been, they've you know, they've turned that around because Audible didn't have yeah. sci-fi when I joined in 2000. Now they've got a whole Audible Frontiers where they record and... Uh, Bring back classic sci-fi. This is a this is an interesting. This one's awesome. This place is so Martian Chronicles, Ray Bra uh, Radbury classic series of short stories that was kind of turned into a novel. These. But, Love but listen, uh, play the little um, play the sample here on this one because this, this is this, a, one's... this is a dramatization. January yeah, twenty thirty, rocket summer. Oh wow! The sound effects. Wow. One minute it was Ohio winter. With doors closed, windows locked. So this is this is a radio, but it, but it's the it's the full uh, text of the books, yeah. but right. but performed with a full cast right. audio. I like it when they do this. I've done a couple of other Audible books like this. This can be hit or miss, you know. But this one this one's cool, and it reminds me of that Dracula, yeah, one that we just recommended. Yeah. That was, is also audio, awesome yeah. with a full cast. So that's kind of a neat one. Fahrenheit four fifty one. Suck at something wicked this week comes a lot of Ray Bradbury. Uh, how how has none of the awesome Foundation robot stuff been turned into good movies? Too hard. You know? I don't know. I don't know. I know. I Robot was okay. It didn't have it didn't have much to do with uh, the original book, know. but uh, Vice and Ten Man, same thing. You know. Yeah. I don't understand. Foundation why more begs of that stuff. to be made into. Yeah. A, now that they've done Lord of the Rings, that yeah, should be the next. An eighteen yeah. parts. Uh, make a mini series. Hey, you know what? Actually, right. Do it on HBO. HBO mini series. Yep. Oh, I would watch that. Yeah, that'd oh, be great. Oh. Now we've just recommended, like, how many Foundation books are there? Like 20? Oh, geez. Well, there are at least, yeah. <laughs> there's I mean, there's, and there's, then there's the a two, prequel. The two trilogies plus, yeah, and, yeah. They, and they tie into the robot books, so. Yeah. But the know, basic, really is, there is a dramatization, uh, but it's short of the Foundation trilogy you could listen to on Audible. I'll tell you what. One of the things, well, it's not that short. Seven hours, 48 minutes. I'll tell you, this is the hard part about Audible. Look, here's the deal. Go to audible.com slash windows. Sign up for the gold account. You get your first credit free. Uh, cancel at any time. The book is yours to keep. I I think you just need to do this right now. Don't don't even think about it. Just do it. And uh, you'll find that uh, once you start listening, you can't stop. In the car, at work, at the gym. Um, I, get, I get so much reading done. I mean, I couldn't go through the stand. If I had to read it, I'd fall asleep. But no, I'm listening to it. It's great. In fact, I listen to it as I fall asleep. Audible.com slash Windows. Give me, give them a try. Do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. I think you will like it. Oh, there's a new, uh, new S S Sookie Stackhouse novel, book twelve. That's what True Blood is uh, based on. I haven't done those yet. Love True Blood. Anyway. Mm. <laughs> Why? Have you seen the Three Stooges movie yet? I haven't seen it. I'm just wondering if I should. <laughs> My son will tell you yes, you should see it. 
because um, he's because he's ten. I, as a as a man, <laughs> I love the Three Stooges. Yes, um, but it looks pretty terrible. I <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I want it to be good. I know. I want it to be. It's not a biopic. It's like the Three Stooges. It's sort of is a it a biopic? biopic? I would like. I would. It's a fictionalized biopic. You know. I would like to see a biopic of the three of the Howard brothers. Yeah, I see. I'd rather see that. Mo, Larry, Curly. This is like dumb, Shemp. dumb, dumb, dumb and dumbest. I think is. Yeah, is what no, it's. that's not good. I don't want to see that. Yeah. Your pick of the week, Master Therot. <laughs> Master task switching in Windows Eight. You know, Master task I, I, switcher. I, I. It's funny. I. I feel like. A lot of the the new stuff around Windows 8 is obscuring some of the other stuff that's going on. You know, I gave a talk this week about Windows 8 usage in business. And I think when you talk about IT pros and administrators and just general business use of Windows 8, people get stuck on the start screen and they never get by it. You know, they look at that and they say, that's not Windows. I don't want to talk about this anymore. You know, and they, they lose sight of the other stuff that's going on. Um, I, I, likewise, I think there's a lot of complaint in the Windows world that Windows 8 is too focused on the tablet and that... They're leaving all of these other people behind. And, you know, actually, as it turns out, a lot of the core stuff that we do in Windows and we don't really think much about has been enhanced in this release for all users. If you use keyboard, mouse, or, or uh, a touch. And one of the classic examples of this is, you know, task switching, right? So in Windows today, we can use Alt plus Tab to, you know, use Windows Flip and, and, and go between uh, the various running applications on the system. But... Windows 8 actually includes many more methods for task switching, including some that are based on touch, yes, but a lot of interfaces that work with mouse, keyboard, and touch as well. And so I'm, I'm writing a series of articles uh, about all, you know, all of the new features of Windows 8, but lately I've been working on these navigational uh, features like the start tip, uh, the back tip, and switcher, which is kind of a, um, you know, a metrofied interface for, for task switching that works when you're on the desktop, it works when you're on the start screen, and it works when you're in a met any Metro-style app. So I, I guess the, the, the general message here is just to, um, y yes, we'll debate all the great stuff about Windows 8 and, and all those high points and stuff, but, um, you know, this thing's coming down the pike, and as it turns out, there are, in fact, some excellent interfaces in there for interacting with the system that simply didn't exist before, and whether you like Metro or not, uh, these things can help you become more efficient. I think task switching is a good example of that, where... They're not really getting the credit for this stuff because people are too busy complaining about the start screen to kind of see beyond that. So um, anyway, I've got I, uh, probably today I'll put the one up about the snap feature, uh, but I've got the other ones uh, for the start tip and the back tip and switcher uh, are already on the website. And having said our tip, our, our tip of the week, perhaps it would behoove you to do a pick of the week now. Yeah, I usually try to pick stuff that's free, but this one's expensive. Oh, good. <laughs> but um, we've mentioned this one in the past. You know, I, I just got my renewal for uh, TechNet Standard uh, email, and so I did oh, renew it. This is a good deal if you, you know, if you're the, in the market for this kind of thing. I think. Yeah, well, I, I think most, a lot of people listening to this are in the market for right. this kind of thing. So, you know, if you're an IT pro and you're looking out at the way technology is changing and your job is going to be changing, you know, maybe you manage email today and you're company is going to go to cloud hosted email in the future or you know you want to move up in life or you know move uh, sideways to another type of technology um, a lot of us will evaluate software and uh, software related services in our own time uh, certainly i spend much of my time doing exactly that and technet standard which is a 200 dollars for the first year and then 149 dollars every year after that for renewals gives you uh, non-production use, meaning good for testing and evaluation versions of virtually all of the software that Microsoft makes. The, the standard version is everything but the enterprise software. But it also gives you um, other things that I think really don't get enough credit. Um, there's an e-learning course, which those are fantastic, 24-7 online chat, priority support in the forums. And if you step up to professional, you get, which is, 300, I'm sorry, it's $349 a year or $249 for renewal. You get all the enterprise software as well. Uh, an additional e-learning course, and you get two complimentary uh, Microsoft professional support calls as well. Um, you know, the TechNet stuff is controversial, and which is unfortunate, because I think some people look at this and they say, well, you're, you're recommending this so people can get free copies of Office that they can put on all their computers or, you know, free copies of Windows that they can put on all their computers. That's not what this is for. You know, this is not about getting Windows cheaply. Uh, this is about learning more about Microsoft software, 
Uh, it's perfectly legal. It, it's perfectly legitimate. I think most of the people who are listening to this understand how this works and what it's for. And uh, and this is something I actually pay for uh, myself every year. So um, I do recommend it. And I recommend, you know, I recommend it for, for all the right reasons, not for, uh, you know, undercutting the system or whatever and getting free copies of, you know, some high-end version of Windows or whatever. Definitely worth it. Definitely. Now, since you have done a software pick that costs one hundred ninety nine dollars, <laughs> one forty nine. I'm well, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It's one. Yeah, you're right. One ninety nine for the first year, and then you yep. can renew it. Yep. Uh, and this would be a year to buy it because you get Windows eight, Windows seven, and yep. Windows eight. It's it's never not the year to buy it, Leo. <laughs> Every year is the right year. <laughs> Every year is the year to buy. It. But it's a bet. I think it's a better deal when there's a new version of Windows and a new version sure. of Office. Then you're getting some for your money. Something sure. something exciting. Meanwhile, if you thought that was expensive, you ought to try Office Live Small Business. Or maybe not. I don't know. It's our enterprise pick of the week, Mary Jo. Yes. Um, you actually can't try it anymore because as oh. of this week, it was phased out. But um, the reason I made it my enterprise pick of the week this week is um, I started hearing from a lot of customers who have been on OL OL OLSB, as it's affectionately known, um, that they were having problems migrating their email. Like some, the people who are going from OLSB to Office 365, they were having some issues. Um, but some people who are trying to just, you know, get their Hotmail to continue and work were having a lot of issues. And there were a lot of questions on the forum about it. And um, people were panicking because they thought they were going to lose Hotmail names that they had had for ages. So um, Microsoft ended up doing the right thing here, at least partially the right thing. And what they're going to do if you're having this problem, if you're one of the many, um, they're going to arrange for custom emails, custom emails hosted through Windows Live Hotmail to still work for six months. And they're providing a support form users can submit to recover any OLSB data if they miss their deadline of May 1 when they shut this off. So you have a chance if you missed it and you panicked because you either lost your email name or you lost your data. Uh, you can go to the OLSB community forum and look for the form, fill that out, and you'll have a reprieve at least for six months. So that's that's good news if you're one of the people. Uh, and they were all kinds of small businesses. I was hearing from people who had like dog washing services and all, you know, people who were using Office Live Small Business, which was a um, hosting and design service that Microsoft had for a long time. So these people, you know, they weren't very tech savvy and they just wanted an easy right, way to host a domain. Right. And so you have a chance if you're one of those people. Yay. Yay. It's difficult to, when you offer a service to cancel it ever. Yeah. You know, people get attached to it. It's it true. Seems, it seems easier to cancel software or to do rev software than to cancel a service. I don't know why, but it just feels that way. I think, yeah. for instance, of uh, Rock Band on iOS. Yesterday, you know, the EA said we're going to kill Rock Band, and people got so upset that they actually brought it back. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. But it's the same thing. You know, the, uh, it has in-app purchases, I think, and so because of the Apple license issue with in-app purchases, they just were going to kill it. And people got so upset, they now say, all right, we won't kill it. Maybe mm -hmm. that'll happen to OS. OLSB. No, probably no. not. But OLSB. 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 That is <laughs> not well the BPOS. BPOS. Yay. Yay. <laughs> that is not our code name pick of the week. No, in fact, the code name pick of the week might remind you of Humphrey Bogart, sweetheart. Definitely. And this was a this was a code name pick suggested by a longtime listener, Wooter. Hey Wooter. Hey Wooter. Um, <laughs> Wooter. It's fun to say. Um, yeah. It's a um, code name Casablanca. And it's a set of libraries that Microsoft is making available on their DevLab site, which is like an experimental site for people who are into dev tools from Microsoft. The idea of it is to make it easier for C++ coders to consume and implement RESTful services. So, you know, the way you can do this already with some of the .NET languages, Microsoft, because they love C++ too these days, they're trying to make it a comparable experience available to people who are using C++. So you'll be able to, I'm going to read this because it's a little complex and I want to get it right. Casablanca supports the access of REST services from native code on Vista, Windows 7, the Windows 8 consumer preview also. Uh, by providing asynchronous C++ binders to HTTP, JSON, and URIs. So if you're one of these people 
who is working with Azure and you're interested in using C++ to develop apps for the cloud, this could be very useful to you. So you should check out the Microsoft DevLab site and get the code and get the access to that. Get the code, man. Friends, we have come to the end of this uh, session of uh, Windows uh, Weekly, but uh, not to the end of Windows. No, you can still go to twit.tv slash dubdub and find every episode we've ever recorded back into the earliest days. I think, Paul, we started the show during Windows 95. <laughs> it feels, it feels like, like it, yeah. doesn't it? 259 yeah. episodes now in toto. Remember when the start button was new, Leo? <laughs> <laughs> what was the? It was a. Uh, was it XP or no? We were in Vista mode. We were in Vista, Vista. when we started. It was Vista wasn't out yet, but was yeah, it really? Was, is it that? So that's long it was ago. Before Vista shipped, yeah. pre Vista. That's how old Paul is. <laughs> I, on the other hand, and I'm on, I'm on clone number three. I never age. We just replace <laughs> them with. We've got a vat in the basement. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I think it's the Pilates. I, I attribute that. To the you want me to plank again? Because I can. I will. Uh -oh. I, I, oh, oh. I heard that Andy Yanako was dancing on the table on Mac Break Weekly, so I got to do something. Wow. This show is uh, every Thursday about 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC on twit.tv. That means you can watch live, but if you don't or you... You know, you want to get an audio or video version of the show. We do make those available for download everywhere. Finer podcasts are aggregated. Absolutely free. Never a charge. Always. I promise. You have my my oath. This show will never cost you a penny. Unless you go out and buy stuff because of it. But that's up to you. Uh, Paul Therott is at the Super Site for Windows. WinSuperSite.com. Mary Jo Foley. All about Microsoft.com. And uh, we will be back next week with another thrilling, gripping edition of Windows Weekly. See you later, guys. And meanwhile, during this show, Revision 3 sold to the Discovery Channel for $30 million. Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> Making me just... Depressed as hell. <laughs> That's crazy. Wow. Crazy talk. <laughs> Isn't that good? Good for them. Good for, is Jim still there? Louder oh, bit? yeah. Jim's CEO. Yep. I'm sure Jim's a millionaire Jim. now. Yeah. They had uh, nine or 10 in um, venture funding, but that still leaves 20 million for uh, founders. I'll never forget the first time I, I saw Jim Lauderback. It was uh, probably at a Comdex. He was, um, he's about three feet tall, and he was carrying a backpack, which was bigger than he was. So, <laughs> He was like this little midget with a giant backpack. He's like a dwarf. <laughs> a dwarf Full in of, the, the Lord of the yeah. Rings, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's really good at uh, digging holes in rock. No, Jim's a, <laughs> Jim's a great guy, and I'm really happy for him. I would, yeah. I would guess it's Prager. David Prager is probably a millionaire now. Kevin Rose has been already a millionaire. It's interesting. All three of Kevin's companies dissolved over the last month. Milk, Dig, just got bought by the Washington Post, and right. Revision 3 by Discovery. So... Mr. Rose is probably probably doing all right. All right. And, and Paul, they just announced they're opening a Microsoft store in the Prudential Center. Know, yes. I, I, a, fr a friend of mine just told me that. Yes. You know, the yep. Prudential Center is where the Apple store is. Almost, It's across the street yep. from the Prudential Center. Mm -hmm. So they can hurl rocks at each other like the beginning of that Monty <laughs> Python movie where they were steering the buildings like ships, you know. I love it. <laughs>